Hey, what's going on, everybody, and welcome to the first day of our 12 Days of Christmas special. And on the first day of Christmas, your J-Monster gives to you a 3v3 on Warhammer 2. This is a battle in the snow with a bunch of holiday-themed armies. I hope you guys are going to enjoy it. So without any further ado, let's jump right into the replay. All right, so let's let the Christmas cheer begin. As the uh, as the battle starts, Vislak and I are just going to go for it. We are going to charge forward at this Kislevite force here commanded by King Strategist. He's got a lot of cavalry to micro on his end. A ton of Empire Knights, uh, some Kislevite cavalry as well. Looking all nice and sexy. Uh, wielding some some chaos shields by the looks of it. And they're going to counter charge here. They're just going to go straight in against my Dryads. My Dryads not going to have a very good time against cavalry. They are still quite weak against, uh, against armor and things like that. So my branch nymphs getting in there, getting stuck in. A beautiful, beautiful sight all along the line. You can see me bringing in my uh, my Wild Riders of Kernis over on this end. These are the ones that are anti-large, and I brought them specifically to deal with enemy cavalry. So this is not a great matchup for the poor Kislevite player. Over here, it looks like to St. Toady brought in his General Warzog, the Dancing Hobgoblin, or Dancing Orc, I suppose. Big rear charge here coming into the Empire Knights. They are not having a good time at all, especially not against this anti-large cav. Let's go ahead. Let's slow down just a little bit because things are going pretty well nuts. Vislax, Gorbeast, Chariots are already in the fight against the Demigriff Knights. And the Demigriff's very, very strong. Definitely anti-large. Not something that you want to play around with. But uh, my Branch Nymphs in there, backed up by the Gorbeast Chariots, they are going to do reasonably well. And looks like there's some Blood God Cavalry here, too. This is one of the units that is unique to Radius. I don't know exactly how good they are, but I imagine they match up pretty well against the Demigriffs. Nonetheless, though, this is the Empire Force being commanded by Subbones McTavish. He's got his Demigriffs with Halberds in there, and that's not going to be a whole lot of fun for our Cavalry. So let's go ahead and let's speed it up here. You can see some of the Ungol Horse Archers under King Strategist circling around the back. Uh, trying to uh, trying to put a little bit of fire into my Wild Riders of Kernis who are now bogged down against a great deal of his cavalry. This is a good place for those un for those Ungol archers to be. Uh, as you can see, they are right behind the Blood God cavalry and right behind everything they want to be behind. They can fire in and uh, and ignore any melee defense bonuses that those units might have. Oh, uh, shield uh, shield bonuses, I should say, that those units might have. He tried just circling around the back in that end. Let's see, uh, what are the fire casters? It looks like he, I think that was Sawbones actually casting a uh, an ill-timed vortex into his own lines. Unfortunately, it's not going to work out so very very well for him. Over on this end, got a lot of orcish infantry here, backed up by uh, looks like some gobnobs. Didn't even know that that was a thing, but apparently it is. Some gobnobs here backing up some of the uh, the regular garden variety orcish knobs. And there's a ton of them in here as well. I think there's also a regiment of renown, the Crimson Killers. We're going to be charging uh, into battle here to try and support Sawbones. A very beleaguered force against the Skaven. And I think the Skaven are being commanded by Nephi, one of our generals from our uh, our Teclas campaign. So Nephi is just going for it here. Lots of Skaven pouring in, trying to reinforce that front line. Looks like we've got the Doom Wheel on the front as well. Oh, it is just going for it. Looks like he's uh, running down some of the Kissel by Crossbowmen. Coming under a little bit of fire here, but let's follow him right in. Beautiful. Straight into those gob knobs. Nephi getting himself stuck in in a glorious way, spreading some Skaven Christmas cheer all throughout the Kislevite and Orcish ranks. We move back over onto this end. Oh, I don't know who cast that, but oh, that is brutal. So much of our cavalry already blobbed up, dealing with the outnumbered forces of King Strategist. Going to get scythed down by a very nice cast there. I think this is one of uh, King Strategist's celestial wizards. Dropping down a big chain lightning, claiming the lives of many of our forces, but ultimately, it's not going to do a, make a lick of difference for the uh, the ultimate fate of King Strategist's forces. You can see the Ungol horse archers over here being caught out by some of the uh, some of the Chaos Warhounds, and they're going to be caught up with now by my Wild Riders. Two units of them, in fact, and actually no one unit backed up by some branch nymphs. So that's going to be all she wrote for these Ungol horse archers. Should be seeing them sweeped off the field momentarily. Now, some of King Strategist's forces have reformed and are presenting a menace to my back line. I'm just going to wheel around my archers. I have a lot of archers and things like that. Uh, I've got lots of elves, lots of Christmas elves, and a whole bunch of angry Christmas trees defending my back lines. King Strategist's not going to be able to punch through there, not at all. Over here, Vislak and his, I don't know, are they Chaos Riders? Maybe they're just a bunch of, like, Northerners. These are, like, the demons from Santa's workshop riding corrupted reindeer, hacking down what remains of the Tsar Noble Cavalry King Strategist's forces, ultimately being overwhelmed. What do we got here? Ooh, a nice fiery, uh, 
A nice fiery skull ripping through our lines, doing a fair amount of damage to my branch nymphs. These much more armored Chaos Warriors here, like the Inspiring Champions and the Storm Room with Shields, they're going to stand up to that really well, but my trees, oh no, they're not happy at all. Now over here, Sawbones forces, all the remains of them. He's, he spent a lot of his energy trying to uh, help out King Strategist as much as he could. Let's go ahead and let's slow it down here so we don't miss too much. Uh, and a lot of Sawbones' effort were, uh, were fairly fruitful. The Demigriff, Demigriff Knights with Halberds, as you can see, managed to push back a significant portion of our uh, of our forces. Now Vislak reforming with some of his Gorby's Chariots. Going to pour back in there, get a, a, a nice... Um, rear and flank charge off here against the Knights of War Swordsmen and the Demigriff Knights. Over on this end, Sawbones previously holding down the line really well, inflicting some serious casualties on his enemies, but ultimately this um, this force here is going to be overwhelmed, especially with these Gorby's Chariots. I believe they're also armor-piercing in addition to being anti-infantry, so they're going to run it down these poor Knights of War. You can see combat already beginning to turn in our favor, and the Demigriff Knights are going to bug out of there, try and uh, try and flee, maybe link up with the remaining forces of Toady and... Um, I think there's a little bit of King Strategist's army over here as well. We seem to be doing very, very well against Nephi's forces. Oh man, those gob knobs. Really cleaning up against the Red Guard. Red Guards don't seem to have an answer to these heavily armored Orcish warriors. Over here, the Doom Wheel still stuck in. Still doing work. Let's see how many kills it's got so far. A reasonable amount against some of these heavily armored units. Nice shot there right into the back of those Ranger crossbowmen. But ultimately, Nephi's forces have been swept from the field for the most part. He's got his Warlock Engineer and a fairly sizable contingent of Plague Monks and Red Guard with Halberds, but ultimately they are just going to be so outnumbered and, uh, and isolated that the Orcs are going to have no problem, I think, surrounding them and destroying that force. What do we got over here? Looks like a, a Breath Spell going in from the Skaven Caster straight through the knobs who are uh, dual wielding weapons. Not going to do it, I think, nearly as much as he wanted, although I think, yeah, a fair amount of HP got shaved off those guys, so obviously that's a pretty decent spell to use against Armored Foes. Back here we have Sawbones General Volkmar the Grim, looking real classy up there in his war chariot. I mean his uh, festive Christmas sleigh, clearly this guy all decked in red has, and a little bit of green in there as well has come uh, prepared for the holiday season. Over on this end, the Gorby's chariots have scattered all the remains of Sawbones forces. You can see them now uh, pushing against the Orc boar chariots backed up by some dragon ogres. That's going to be an easy fight for those Gore Beasts. Look at this, one of those chariots already going down. And those, uh, those Orc Chariots are actually going to be routed. And they're going to begin to flee off the battlefield. Uh, what do we got over here? Some of Sawbones' forces still left, or still left uh, kind of hanging over on the other end of the battlefield. Armored Spearmen uh, against my branch nymphs not going to do so well, especially with some of this cavalry back here. It looks like they're cleaning up all the remains of the Tsar's Noble Cavalry. And then afterwards, they're going to have free reign to charge straight into the rear of those Armored Spearmen. Looks like some of them are already beginning to rout. Uh, St. Tony the Pacifist coming in with one of his Boar Boy Chariots looking to take advantage of our forces being this bunched up. Uh, especially some of these aspiring champions who are going to be weak against the Armor Piercing and the anti-large bonuses that these guys can bring to the battlefield. Charging straight into those Chaos Warriors. Decent enough charge, doing a fair amount of damage to them. But uh, ultimately, ultimately, those Chariots not going to have a very good time, especially being this outnumbered. I think they're... Are they routing? No. This is actually Toady microing his Chariots very effectively and uh, just cycling his charges in and out of those heavily armored Chaos Infantry. Now over on this end, it looks like the Chaos Knights here have finished dealing with all that remains of that Zara's Cavalry. I think we're going to see them charge... Oh, I see what they're going to do. They're going to go right for the Spearmen first. Uh, nice charge all along the flank. Probably going to route that unit pretty quickly. And that's going to be all she wrote for those Spearmen. I hope they charge into the rear of those Armored Spearmen. Indeed they are. Vislak being a king with his uh, Cav Micro. Being exactly where he needs to be, when he needs to be there. Going to route those Armored Spearmen. It looks like that might have been the Kislevite General as well. So now our forces are going to be free to reform and move against all the remains of St. Tony the Pacifist forces. Now he's pretty... Uh, He's in a decent enough position. There's still some cavalry and some, uh, some units here that may reform from Sawbones. But he's also got some of his uh, Boar Boy Chariots over here behind our lines. And that can be a real problem for a lot of my uh, my very lightly armored archer. So I'm going to have to be really careful about that. I don't think I actually notice this chariot. This is not moving. Uh, I'm not really, uh, not really paying the most attention to it. I may have just glanced at it and thought, oh yeah, I'm sure it's probably dead. But... Uh, my back lines being this undefended is definitely a big mistake on my part, especially with that hard-hitting and hit for the unit in the back. Now, over on this end, you can see I brought in some of my tree men and some of the more sexy units from my line. Uh, I'm throwing in my tree kin there to try and hold up their line, make them bunch up a little bit for us so that our forces can move in and quickly envelop them. Or use their magic to great effect, which uh, indeed looks like it's going to be the case right here. Got another fiery vortex. That's like a pillar of fire or something going down here on top 
of the knobs. Unfortunately, it clipped my poor tree men a little bit, and they don't like fire, so they're going to begin to flee off the battlefield. And that's going to free up a significant amount of Orcish forces. Now, I'm moving in with some more of my infantry, trying to tie them down. Got a lot of archer support in the back here, and uh, we've actually managed to route all the remains of, I think that's some of the Kislevite cavalry, and that's pretty well most of the remaining cavalry for our opponents. So that's going to leave us masters of the field in terms of our fast-moving units, but this is the worst here. My fears have been realized. Toady moving in with his boar boy chariots, coming straight for my glade guard who are trying to get out of there. Uh, this one unit I'm going to throw into the bus. This one here is going to uh, get a little bit of distance and, and try and reform. My units in the back, however, going to pour in some supporting fire, and ultimately those boar boy chariots are going to be I think overwhelmed just by the sheer amount of volley fire coming in. So they are going to do a ton of damage to my Grilly Guard, especially in the charge there. Uh, getting into this second unit as well, ripping through them, doing uh, a nice bit of HP damage. I think taking out some of the models as well. But ultimately they are going to shatter, and that's going to leave our back lines free and safe. So now we are free to overwhelm all that remains of our opponents. Uh, I think the last man standing on the field here is going to be Volkmar the Grim on his Christmas chariot, doing some serious work against uh, the infantry present on the ground. Come on, Volkmar. Do it. Run your chariot into something. Oh, looks like he's going to cast... Looks like a... Uh, oh, a damage spell. I'm not entirely sure which one that was, but it did a decent amount of damage to uh, some of our monsters. And I think we basically wiped out all the remains of our opponents, so now it just really remains for us to deal with this guy, this handsome devil. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to fast forward through this. See Volkmar the Grim putting up an admirable fight here. That is until I can get in there with my legendary lord. Now, what have we got over here? Oh, it looks like some of the knobs still trying to flee. Yeah, we're just running them down, uh, hitting them with a few vortex spells and things like that, taking them, uh, taking them down to basically no HP and no morale. And actually, I think there's a little bit of shattering going on over there as well. So that's going to be basically all she wrote for their infantry lineup. Volkmar the Grim still tanking it, still taking all of these foes on. Absolutely fearless. No, no routing uh, to be seen from this fellow. So it's gonna take it's gonna take a real hero, the hero that we all deserve and that I think we all need, and that is gonna be Durthu, the big man himself coming to give Volkmar a little bit of a tickle. Let's see how well he does. I wonder how many kills Volkmar has gotten at this point? A significant amount, 104 on that on that Lord right there. Durthu giving him a good smack with his sword. The ancient sword gifted to him by Daith, one of the greatest elven smiths in the Woodland Realm. Durthu, it looks like he's thinking about maybe what to do next. I think actually what happened at this point is uh, had a little bit of a, a bug with one of Durthu's abilities. So I'm going to pull him out a little bit. Let's see what he does. Boom! Durthu not caring about the lives of the small lesser beings on the ground. Going to drop a Lamentation of Despair into uh, into Volkmar the Grim, and that's going to do a serious amount of damage. And finally, one last hit there from Durthu's Mighty Fist is going to bring Volkmar down for good. Let's go ahead and take a look at some of the uh, some of the kills here. Uh, take a look at Subbones with Tavish Force. They did really well, especially his Bright Wizard getting a lot of kills. Uh, his infantry, infantry didn't do too badly at all. The Knights of Moor are very elite. I don't think you really could have expected too much more for them, given how outnumbered and overwhelmed they were. Uh, the Demigriff Knights with Halberds, 71 kills. Not bad on them at all. Actually, had some Grenadiers. Uh, I don't think... I, apparently, they got a ton of kills, probably on the, the lighter troops for the Skaven. We might have missed that in the early game. Uh, Vislax Forces, his beautiful chariots, bringing Christmas cheer to the weak men of the South, doing some serious work, especially in that one. 102 units killed. Uh, Nephi's Army, a lot, of, uh, a lot of beautiful green and red colored rats. I'm very... Uh, very holiday seasonal indeed. Doing not bad at all. He was ultimately overwhelmed, I think, uh, given the support that King Strategist was able to lend to Toadie and just the sheer amount of beastly infantry and uh, the the uh, the orcish sleds, we'll call them, the uh, that uh, Toadie was able to bring to bear. So speaking of Toadie, let's take a look at his army. Damn, those knobs did some serious, serious work against the Skaven. Uh, his Night Goblin Squid Coffers, I don't think they really got the value that, that Toadie was hoping for, but those chariots, not bad. Not bad at all. Taking one final look here at my army. Durthu getting a few kills. Uh, my branch nymphs being the first one into combat did some serious work. My uh, my glade guard and things like that really uh, really bringing a fair amount of value to them to the uh, to the battle. They didn't 
really get a ton of kills, but I know they did a ton of HP damage. And uh, my Wild Riders, look at that. For the most part, they did really well. Uh, 122 on that one, 70 on that one. Uh, not so much on some of these other units, but I think they were locked in combat with maybe some Demigris. My my Angry Christmas Trees, the Treekin, didn't really do all that well, but they're they're just really sticky, and that's that's pretty much what they're there for, just to tank a lot of damage. And Dorothy's Grove, getting a fair amount of kills as well. I hope you guys have enjoyed the first installment of our 12 Days of Christmas special. There's going to be plenty more coming in the future, I guarantee it. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to leave a like and a comment down in the comment section. Let me know what you think, and I'm also open to feedback on what you want to see in the Christmas special, because this ultimately is something that I wanted to do for you guys for the holiday, so you get to pick your gifts, so let me know. In any case, my name is Jordan, also known as J Monster. I will see you guys later. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye!